about to blow up. Harriet says, do you hear that, Dred? That noise is getting louder. Dred Scott, oh God, Harriet, it does not sound good. Harriet, take Eliza above. I will get our stuff and meet you shortly. Okay, so, oops. Dred gets our belongings just as the boiler explodes. The paddle wheeler is torn apart and starts to sink. Narrator, Harriet and Eliza made it off the boat safely, but are in the water. Harriet is clutching Eliza. Harriet is a strong lady who finds a large piece of wood to hold onto and use as a raft. Who wants to be called a strong lady in any book? Have you ever, have you ever lived with a woman? Don't call someone a big, strong lady. I don't know if that's very um, um, flattering. The current is drifting them towards the shore where people are waiting to help them with blankets and food. Harriet and Eliza make it to shore where several Mormons from the city of Nauvoo attempt to comfort them. Harriet Scott says, Joseph Smith, the mayor of the city, heard the explosion. He rides with his brother Hiram to the water's edge. They are met by Joseph Smith's wife, Emma. This is where J Jeff had put two wives. And I said to him, I will only read this if you give Joseph Smith one wife and her name is Emma. And even if he did have other wives at this time, Emma did not like it. So she wouldn't show up on the shore with her wonderful sister wives and, oh my gosh, this is fun. No, not at all. Emma would not enjoy that. Got to close the door here. Find me doing a mess. So they attempt to give aid to the survivors. Hours go by with no sign of dread. Just after night fell, as, as Harriet and Eliza are warmed by a fire, dread appears out from nearby bushes. He is cut and bruised, but relatively good shape considering what he's gone through. The couple hug each other for an extended period of time. Harriet and some of the people of Nauvoo nurse dread's wounds. The next morning, Joseph Smith reappears. Joseph Smith says. Well, Mr. Scott, I am glad that you are well. Once you are able to, would you and your family please join my family for some dinner? Our house is just up this road. So, Dred Scott shows up. He says, thank you kindly, sir. I believe we will be able to come tonight. Who do I owe my heartfelt thanks to? Joseph says, I'm Joseph Smith. You're near our city, Nauvoo. We'll, we shall take more when you are arrested. So, here's, here's some pictures of Joseph on the, on the video. Yeah, after the temple, we got Joseph Smith. Let's see, where is he? Oh, yeah, he's, okay, so the Nauvoo Legion, they had like 3,000 Mormons, part of this legion right here, and here he is leading the legion. I thought I had some other pictures here, too. Here's a picture of him on his horse. So, Mr. Scott, I'm glad to see you and your family are improving tonight. Dred Scott, I thank you and the people of your town for the help you have afforded me and my family. We will be eternally grateful for all your kindness. Joseph says, it is our pleasure to assist all God's children when the need arises. Mr. Scott, your family is welcome to stay here. If you like it here, you can stay as long as you like. Dred says, thank you kindly for your offer, Mr. Smith. We must be returning to St. Louis. Our master is waiting. Joseph Smith says, Mr. Scott, the only master you have to answer to is the one above who decided to let you and your family live today. I beg you to reconsider. My wife Harriet agrees with you, Mr. Smith, but I am not sure. If we stay with you, will we surely be hunted down? And Mrs. Emerson would not allow us to be free. All the Almighty has given you a free will, Mr. Scott. It is unfortunate and a sin that this woman, whom you speak of as a master, has seized it like a thief in the night. Most certainly your master will have to account for his indiscretions in the afterlife. In the meantime, the choice is yours. We are here to help you, Mr. Scott, and your family. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for taking talking sense into my husband. I am running for president to lead these here United States. When I am elected, I will make it a point to free all slaves in the country. I shall compensate Mrs. Emerson's for losses. Please keep this in mind, Mr. Scott. Mr. Smith, I hope you win. We need brave men like you to stand up to Irene Emerson. After the dinner, we are getting ready to get some rest. As our daughter sleeps, the topic of their family's freedom resurfaces. Harriet, I have learned today a valuable lesson. My views about my freedom lack courage, the type of courage that you showed today in the water, saving our little one's life. You and Eliza mean a great deal to me, more than my life and the comfort I have with this meager existence can be snatched and taken away from us at any time. Dread, what are you saying? Harriet, I believe you are right, that we should make every attempt to seek freedom, not only for us, but our daughter's sake. 
Dread, I'm glad that you feel this way. What shall we do? When we return to St. Louis, I will ask Mrs. Emerson if we can purchase our happiness. Harry, oh, I do not have a good feeling about that lady. So Joseph Smith ran for president. It's kind of interesting. I don't think he thought he was going to be the next president, but it's a democracy and they were being kicked around from place to place all throughout the frontier. And they had one of the largest cities in uh, Illinois. So they said, hey, let's run for president, get our ballot out there, get our views known. And it, um, it made them known around the country. So yes, Joseph Smith did run for president. And you can see that he had like 3,000 soldiers in his militia that they allowed them to create when they incorporated in Nauvoo. And also not long after that, Joseph Smith was sent to a jail by near by um, um, by Nauvoo, and a mob broke out and murdered him and assassinated him and his brother in this area. And I'm sitting here thinking, if I were Joseph Smith and I had three thousand soldiers and there were like fifty people in this mob, I would take after them. But we're a kind, peaceful, loving easygoing group, us Mormons. So we just moved out of town and took off west. And um, this is us crossing the Mississippi, going west to, to Utah to get away from the people that wanted to persecute us. So little little background on Mormons. And my grandpa um, was probably in one of these wagon trains in about the 18, well, about 20, 25 years later, not really around this time. Well, not, not 25, like eight years later or so. So um, that's where I came from. So little, little background and I enjoyed Jeff, Jeff making this for you. I, thought, I hope you enjoyed my ad living and a little Mormon um, commentary and uh, as well as everyone else.